Hi everyone. So today's video is on the topic the Indian Trust Act 1882. So what is a trust? Trust is an obligation annexed to the ownership of the property and arising out of a confidence reposed in and accepted by the owner or declared and accepted by him for the benefit of another or for another owner. Every trust must have a purpose for which it is established. So a property uh, for some purpose it is there for a purpose and it is held by some other person that is there will be a person called beneficiary and for that person's benefit other person is holding that is what is trust now let us go into the introduction part this act the indian trust act was enacted in 1882 during british rule in india it was governed by the Parliament of India and it provides a legal framework for the creation, administration and dissolution of trust in India. It consists of 85 sections covering various aspects of trust law. It, it has uh, the formation of trust, the rights of trustee, the rights of beneficiary, duty of trustee uh, and it contains how to dissolve a trust, public charitable trust, various aspects of trust law. Now coming to the importance of trust law, why we need a, such a law, trust enables individuals to manage and distribute their assets for specific purposes such as education, healthcare and social welfare. First one is that it facilitates private and public initiatives. Second one is charitable and religious activities. Trust law allows for the establishment of charitable trust, promoting philanthropy and social welfare activities. Next is estate planning and asset protection. Trusts provide a mechanism for individuals to safeguard and distribute their wealth according to their wishes, ensuring financial security for beneficiaries. Now coming to legal protection for beneficiaries. Trust law outlines the rights and obligation of trustees and beneficiaries, ensuring transparency and accountability in trust administration. So their rights and obligations will be protected legally. They can move legally if any of their rights or uh, rights of protection is violated. They'll have a remedy. Right without a remedy is useless, right? So giving a remedy through this act, people can move legally if their rights are violated. Next one is economic development. Trust plays a vital role in promoting economic development by facilitating investment, funding research and innovation and supporting entrepreneurship. Legal certainty and stability is the final importance of trust law. The Trust Act provides a clear legal framework for the creation and administration of trust, offering certainty and stability to stakeholders involved. Now coming to the next slide, we have definitions, the important definitions in uh, the act we are discussing, the Trust Act. I hope you can see the screen. The first one is trust. What is a trust? A trust is a relationship where property is held by one party and that party who is holding the property is called the trustee for the benefit of another and the party who is getting benefit is called beneficiary. It's easy to remember, right? Trust may be created by the settler through a trust deed or by operation of law. Now coming to the second definition, it's settler. Who is a settler? A person who creates the trust by transferring property to the trustee for the benefit of the beneficiary that is the person who's standing in the middle of this uh, transaction and who's settling this uh, transaction he transfers the property uh, to the trustee for the benefit of beneficiary also referred to as truster or guarantor he's also known as truster or guarantor now coming to trustee a person or entity it can be a person or an entity like company association anything entrusted with the management and administration of the trust property that person will not get any he will not have any uh, the, he will have rights but it is not like he'll get the trustee is mostly given the duty of management and administration of trust property this beneficiary will be more likely a minor so he'll not be able to do things legally this guy the trustee will have to do the things legally he have to manage it he have to administer it and he have to do it in good faith for the benefit of the beneficiary he holds legal title to trust property but must use it for the benefit of the beneficiary according to the terms of trust. We have already said that, right? So next is beneficiary, person or group for those whom the benefit of trust property is held. Entitled to receive benefits from the trust according to the terms set, set by the settler. 
Now, finally, trust property. What is a trust property? Assets including real estate, money, securities and other valuables held in trust for the benefit of beneficiary. So, the subject of this uh, trust agreement is uh, or contract is an asset or trust property. It can be anything like real estate, money, securities or any other valuable from which the beneficiary will be getting benefit due to the administration and um, management by the trustee. Property transferred by the settler to the trustee for the purpose of trust. That is also trust. That is the property which the settler transfers to the trustee for the benefit of the beneficiary is trust property. Now, having completed the definitions part, let's go to move to the next slide. Essentials of a trust. What are the essentials of a trust? First one is trust. Of course, we have said that a trust is an obligation annexed to the ownership of property and arising out of confidence reposed in and accepted by the owner or declared and accepted by him for the benefit of another. Second one, it should be for a lawful purpose. A trust must be created for a lawful purpose. The purpose of trust is lawful unless it is forbidden by law is of such nature that if permitted it would defeat the provisions of any law or is fraudulent or involves or implies injury to the person or property of another or it has been declared void by a court unless it is of these uh, the, unless it comes within the these categories it is lawful next one who may create trust a trust may be created by a person by every person who is competent to contract with the permission of a principal civil court of original jurisdiction by or on behalf of a minor but which subject in each case to the law for the time being in force as to the circumstances and extent in and to which the author of the trust may dispose of the trust property so as i've already mentioned this trust thing is mostly done for minors it is uh, the trustee will be holding and managing and administering the property for the benefit of this minor who is not in, uh, competent to uh, enter into contracts yet now that uh, the essential part is continued what is the subject of trust? The subject matter of a trust must be property transferable to the beneficiary. We have already said in the last slide that subject matter of trust is the trust property. So that property is the subject matter. It will be transferred to the uh, trustee for the benefit of the beneficiary. It must not be merely beneficial interest under a subsisting trust. Who may be a beneficiary? Every person capable of holding property may be a beneficiary. A proposed beneficiary may renounce his interest under the trust by disclaimer addressed to the trustee or by setting up with notice of the trust a claim inconsistent therewith. So any person who can who is able to hold a property can be trust, a beneficiary and he, may, he or she may renounce the trust by setting up a notice or a, uh, sending a disclaimer to the trustee and who may be a trustee every person is capable every person capable of holding property may be a trustee but where the trust involves the exercise of discretion he cannot execute it unless he is competent to contract where there is a choice of discretion only if he is having a competency to contract that is uh, he should be a, not a fun sound mind he should have reached the age of majority uh, that is 18 years according to indian majority act and such things he, should be competent to contract uh, as under section 10 of Indian Contract Act. Now finally trustee to execute trust. The trustee is bound to uh, fulfill the prob purpose of the trust and to obey the directions of the author of the trust given at the time of its cre creation except as modified by the consent of all the beneficiaries being competent to contract. Now let's move on to how the formation of a trust takes place requirements for formation the trust must have a settler who creates the trust a trustee who manages the trust property and the beneficiary who receives the benefits the trust property which can be any legal asset must be clearly identified so first thing is a trust property must be identified it have to be transferred to, to the trustee by a settler for the benefit of a beneficiary that is a requirement for formation Next is expression of intention. The settler must express an intention to create a trust for the benefit of the beneficiary. Third one is capacity of parties. The settler, trustee and beneficiary must have legal capacity to enter into a trust agreement. Minor beneficiaries may be permitted but special rules may apply. Beneficiary, the um, minor can be a beneficiary, but he cannot be a trustee in case of discretion of choice, choice of discretion is present and he neither can be a settler. Legal formalities in writing. The trust may be created orally or in writing, but certain trusts, especially those involving immovable property, must be in writing. 
Registration. Trust rates involving immobile property may require registration as per local laws. Certainty of subject matter and object. The trust property and beneficiaries must be clearly identified to ensure the trust validity. Moving on to the next slide, kinds of trust. We have, we'll be discussing about 10 kinds of trust in this slides. First one is public trust, established for charitable or religious purposes. Public trust is mainly for public. It is established for charitable or religious purposes and it operates as the benefit for the benefit of the public at large or a particular community. Examples include trust for education, healthcare, poverty relief and cultural preservation. Next one is private trust. It is created for specific individuals or families. We can understand it just from the name of the kind of trust itself it operates for the benefit of named beneficiaries examples include trust for estate planning asset protection and providing for family members third kind of trust is express trust created expressly by the settler through a written or oral declaration terms and conditions of trust are clearly stated in the trust instrument fourth one is implied trust just as the Name suggests the operation of law or circumstances without explicit de declaration by the settler. We have to understand it from the circumstances. There is no express declaration. That is, it, the trust is not declared by words written or spoken. We have to uh, consider the circumstances and uh, draw whether a trust exists or not. Examples include resulting trust and constructive trust. Revocable trust can be altered, amended or revoked by the settler during their lifetime. That is what is revocable trust. Settler retains control over the trust property and its distribution. Irrevocable trust is that which cannot be altered, amended or revoked just as, we, just as the name suggests. Settler relinquishes control over the trust property which is managed according to the terms of the trust instrument. In revocable trust, the settler uh, uh, the settler retains the control over the property, but in irrevocable trust, the re settler relinquishes the control over the property. Testamentary trust, trust created through a will and come into effect upon the death of a testator, like the will. It comes into effect after the death of a person, right? Like that, testamentary trust. Often used for estate planning and providing for beneficiaries after the testator's death. Living trust created during the settler's lifetime and can take immediately uh, can take effect immediately or upon a specified event. If it uh, a, a life a living trust can take effect immediately after uh, the drafting of the uh, trust deed, or it can uh, take place such as uh, it can take take effect by completion of a certain event, uh, depending upon the conditions uh, which has been given in the trust deed for the for the commencement of the trust. Providing flexibility in managing assets and avoiding probate. Discretionary trust is that trustee has discretion over how trust assets are distributed among the beneficiaries. It also provides flexibility to meet changing circumstances and needs of beneficiaries. Finally, charitable trust established for advancing charitable purposes such as education, healthcare, poverty alleviation and religious activities. It is governed by special legal requirements to qualify for tax benefits and charitable trust. So the charitable tax trust is having specific uh, tax redem redemptions and benefits and charitable status. Moving on, we have duties of trustee. The first duty is fiduciary duty. Trustees must act in the best interest of the beneficiaries, exercising their powers honestly and in good faith. Second one is management of trust property. Trustees are responsible for managing and preserving the trust property, including making prudent investments and maintaining accurate records. Duty of care and loyalty. Trustees must exercise care and diligence in managing the trust, avoiding conflicts of interest and acting solely in the interest of the beneficiary. So the trustee will have to act in the interest of beneficiary. Adherence to trust terms. The trustee must adhere to the terms and conditions outlined in this trust instrument, distributing assets according to the settler's wishes. Prudent investment. Trustee have a duty to invest trust funds prudently, considering risk, return and diversification and seeking professional advice when necessary. Finally, communication and accountability. Trustees should keep beneficiaries informed about trust administration, provide regular reports and seek professional advice when needed, maintaining transparency, transparency and trust. Rights of a trustee. What are the rights of a trustee? First one is right to manage trust property. Trustees have the authority to manage and administer the trust property in accordance with the terms and trust deed and applicable law. 
it includes to invest trust funds collect income make distributions to the beneficiaries the second right is right to be indemnified trustees have the right to be indemnified from the trust assets for any liabilities incurred in the proper administration of the trust that is by uh, acting according to his prudence with in in um, with reasonable diligence and care if he incurs any cost then he has a right to be indemnified this includes legal expenses taxes and other costs related to trust management third one is right to delegate delegate means to appoint some other person to do our duty that is delegate trustees have the right to delegate certain duties and responsibilities to professionals such as investment advisors or legal counsel if permitted by the trust deed and law if they are if the deed permits it or if the law permits it he can delegate his duties however ultimate responsibility remains with the trustee next is right to compensation trustees are entitled to reasonable compensation for their services unless waived in the trust instrument or agreed upon by the beneficiaries if the uh, trust deed is against giving compensations to the trustee he will not be getting any compensation otherwise he is entitled to entitled to it uh, compensation should reflect the time effort and expertise required to administer the trust right to seek court guidance trustees have the right to seek court guidance on matters related to trust administration interpretation of trust terms and resolution of disputes we have already seen that because trustee has a right to take a delegation uh, can delegate his duty to legal advisors so naturally he will have the right to seek court guidance finally right to be released from liability trustees have a right to be released from liability for actions taken in good faith and in accordance with the terms of the trust if the trustee has taken an action in good faith and it is it comes within the terms of the trust but it has incurred some liabilities then he has a right to be released from some liabilities beneficiaries cannot hold trustees personally liable for losses incurred in the proper administration of trust even though the trust was properly administered if some liabilities or losses have been incurred the beneficiaries cannot uh, hold the trustees liable what are charitable trust a charitable trust is a type of trust established for charitable purposes such as the advancement of education relief of poverty promotion of health and other activities beneficial to the public what is the purpose of it the primary purpose is to benefit society or specific communities by supporting charitable causes and activities charitable trust may support a wide range of initiatives including education health care poverty alleviation environmental conservation cultural preservation trustees and governance charitable trust are managed by trustees who have a fiduciary duty to act in the best interest of the trust and its beneficiaries trustees are responsible for ensuring that the trust's assets are used in accordance with its charitable purposes and for benefit of the intended beneficiaries tax benefits charitable trust often qualify for tax benefits such as exemption from income tax on donations received and deductions for donors who contribute to trust these tax benefits incentivize individuals and organizations to support charitable causes and contribute to trust mission finally public accountability charitable trusts are subject to public accountability and may be required to publish annual reports financial statements and other information to demonstrate transparency and accountability in their operations coming to the final part of this presentation dissolution of trust that is we are uh, putting an end to the trust definition what is a dissolution of trust it is it refers to the termination or winding up of the trust arrangement resulting in the distribution of trust assets to the beneficiaries or other designated recipients circumstances of dissolution when do we do uh, do this dissolution thing trust may be dissolved for various reasons including the fulfillment of trust purpose expiration of trust term or occurrence of an event specified in the trust instrument other reasons for dissolution may include impracticality of trust administration loss of trust property or court order what are the procedures the trust may initiate the dissolution process by filing a petition in court or following the procedures outlined in the trust agreement instrument a trustee may notify the beneficiaries of the dissolution uh, or interested parties of the intention to dissolve the trust and seek their consent and approval distribution of trust assets so upon dissolution of a trust the assets will be distributed among the beneficiaries or the persons whose name are given in the trust in a, a deed upon dissolution trust assets are distributed among beneficiaries according to the terms of the trust the trustee may require to liquidate the true assets pay any outstanding debts or liabilities and distribute the remaining assets to beneficiaries in proportion to their entitlements 
court approval in some cases dissolution of trust may require court approval especially if there is dis there are disputes among beneficiaries or questions regarding trustee's action the court may oversee the distribution of trust assets to ensure compliance with legal requirements and protection of beneficiaries interest finally accounting and closure after distributing trust assets and settling all obligations the trustee must prepare a final account showing all transactions and activities relating to trust so that's all about trust and the trust act hope you all enjoyed the presentation thank you